This is number 5 on the 1D Collisions and Explosion Sheet. This is a situation that's called a ballistic pendulum. Ballistic, that word you might be familiar with, I, when you talk about the study of a bullet, how a bullet moves through the air, or a cannonball, or anything like that, that's called ballistics. A ballistic pendulum was a device used to, dis to calculate the initial speed of a bullet before modern timing devices were available. So how a ballistic pendulum works is a bullet comes in and embeds inside the pendulum and then the force of the bullet hitting the block causes it to move. The block is tethered at the top so it can't really move horizontally. It can only really move vertically. It can move a little bit horizontally but it swings. And so we have an initial position before the collision which would be time one and then a final position after the collision, which would be time two. You know what, there's really three things. Time, well, you know what, let's do th three times. Time one is before the collision with the bullet. Time two is immediately after the collision when the bullet is embedded inside the block. And time three is when the bullet block system has swung up to some new height H. And also it would rotate a little bit, but this gives you an idea. Um, and let's say like this is H. So again, the whole point of this type of apparatus is to determine the initial velocity of the bullet. We want to know how fast the bullet was going before it struck the pendulum. So again, time one is before bullet strikes. Time two is bullet embedded. in the block and time three is block bullet at top of swing. So really what this is, it's a problem that has both conservation of energy elements and conservation of momentum. So we're going to have to run it backwards. Since ultimately we want to know the speed of the bullet, we have to, but the only thing we actually know is how high it goes. So we're going to have to start with the conservation of energy to figure out if we know the potential energy at time 3, we can know the kinetic energy at time 2. If we know the kinetic energy at time 2, we can figure out the velocity at time 2. And if we know the velocity at time 2, we can use conservation of momentum to figure out the velocity of the bullet at time 1. This is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision because we go from one object, uh, two objects having different initial velocities to a combined or stuck together object that shares a final velocity. In a ballistic pendulum problem, the first step is to, you, uh, assuming that you want to figure out the initial velocity of the bullet, the first step is to figure out the velocity of the system after the collision using the height that you're given for the final position of the swing. Now the things that we're given for this problem are the mass of the bullet, I'm just going to write it all as a list. We know the mass of the bullet is 15 grams. I'll call that little m. We know the mass of the pendulum is 3.2 kilograms. We know the length of the rope is 2.9 meters. And, oh, that's nice. They, we know that the height, finally, at time 3, is 0.4 meters. A lot of times they give you theta, but isn't that nice? They gave us h. So now we're trying to figure out actually what's the velocity of m at time one. That's ultimately what we're looking for. So step one We use conservation of energy to find the velocity at time two. So there's no spring here. There's no work done by friction or any non-conservative force. So I'm going to con compare. Ah, ah, oh well. So 
So to stick with the one, two, and three that I've already established, the potential plus kinetic at time two equals the potential plus kinetic at time three. At time two, it's at the lowest height, so my UG2 is zero. At time three, it's at the highest height, for my K3 is zero. So I'm left with one half this so the masses cancel out and so we can figure out the velocity at time two mm. square root of 2gh I got my calculator 2 times 9.8 times 0.4. So 2.8 meters per second. Okay, so now this becomes a conservation of momentum problem. So the total momentum at time one equals the total momentum at time two. So, um, m v m one plus big M v m one equals, and then they combine. They have a shared common velocity after the collision. So we know everything on this side of the equation. We know the initial velocity of the block is zero. And so we're left with the initial velocity of the bullet, which is what we're looking for, equals m plus m. That. So now it's just plugging in. Point oh one five plus three point two times two point eight divided by point oh one five six hundred point one meters per second. Ta da.